Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the USA Team Selection Test 2024, Problem 6. At first, let's have a look on the problem statement. We are asked to find all function f from the real numbers to the real numbers such that f of x f of y plus f of y equals f of x plus y plus f of x y for all real numbers x and y. And here I want to denote this equation by p of x y. As usual, we want to try to plug in small values for x and y. And at first, we want to try out the value 0. If we plug in x equals 0, then we can see that the left-hand side is just equal to the right-hand side. So this gives us nothing. And therefore, let's try to plug in p of x, 0. This gives us f of x, f of 0 plus f of 0 is equal to f of x plus f of 0. We can subtract f of 0 from both sides to get that fx f of 0 equals f of x. Let's keep this in mind for later and try to plug in some other small values. Next, we want to try p of 1 y. Here we get that f of f of y plus f of y is equal to f of y plus 1 and now again plus f of y. We can subtract f of y from both sides to get that f of f of y equals f of y plus 1. Right now, these two equations are the only promising ones we can get by plugging in small values. And here, maybe from the second equation, we get the instinct that we want to prove that f is injective because then we would have f of y equals y plus 1. But right now, we are not able to do this and therefore we have to try out another approach. Taking a look at our equation here, we can see that on the left hand side we have the product of x and f of y as an argument and on the right hand side we have just the product of x and y as an argument. And this motivates us to try to use this equation here two times at first with f of y and after that with y to get a new equation. So let's take a look at p of f of x comma y which tells us that f of f of x f of y plus f of y is equal to f of f of x plus y plus f of f of x y. As I said, we want to use this equation here once again, but we have to be careful because x and y are switched. We get that this is equal to f of f of x plus y. And now the right hand side of our expression here plus f of x plus y plus f of x y and then we have to subtract the f of y term but since x and y are switched we subtract f of x. After bringing the f of x term to the left hand side we can see that after switching the variables x and y the left hand side stays the same and on the right hand side only this term here changes. Therefore we can conclude that f of f of x plus y must also be equal to f of f of y plus x. At this point, I want to mention that these two equations here together are really strong because they allow us to at first move an f inside an argument and at second, they allow us to remove one f if we have two f's after each other. And therefore, we are able to remove nearly every f inside an argument. To show an example, let's take a look at the expression f of f of f of x plus y. Using this equation, we get that this is equal to f of f of y plus f of x. And now we can use this equation here again to get that this is equal to f of f of f of y plus x. Now we use this equation here for both sides. At first, on the right hand side, we get that this is equal to f of f of y plus 1 plus x and on the left hand side we get that this is equal to f of f of x plus 1 plus y. Here we can use this equation now again to conclude that the left hand side is equal to f of x plus 1 plus f of y. We can see that the difference of the argument of the left hand side and the right hand side is equal to f of y plus 1 minus f of y 
plus one, which I want to call d. And now if this difference d is not equal to zero, then our function is periodic with period d. Let's investigate on this case at first. So assume that we can find some value y such that f of y plus one minus f of y minus one equal d is not equal to zero. Of course, we want to plug in d into our equation now. So let's try out p of x comma d, which tells us that f of x f of d plus f of d is equal to f of x plus d plus f of x d. The left hand side is just equal to f of x f of zero plus f of zero. And now this is equal to f of x plus f of zero due to our first equation here. On the right hand side, we can see that this is equal to f of x plus f of x d. Subtracting f of x from both sides gives us that f of zero is equal to f of x times d. But now, since d is not equal to zero, we know that x times d can be any real number. And therefore, we know that in this case, our function is constant. So f of x is equal to a constant c for all x in R. And we can indeed see that this is a solution to our functional equation. If we are not in this case, then we know that f of y plus one must always be equal to f of y plus one. We can use this equation here again together with this argument to evaluate the value of f of zero. Namely, if we plug in y equals zero into this equation here, then we get that f of f of x is equal to f of x plus f of zero. The left hand side is equal to f of x plus one. And now if f of zero is not equal to one, then we are again in our case that our function is periodic. And therefore we can conclude with the same argument here that f of x must be constant. So if we are not in this case, then we have that f of zero is equal to one. And together with this equation here, we can conclude by induction that f of n must be equal to n plus one for all integers n. Now we are able to evaluate f on the integers. And thus our next step is maybe to try to prove if we can evaluate f of n times x where n is an integer. We are indeed able to do this, but since we will only need this equation for n equals to two, I will only prove it for n equals to two. P of x comma one gives us that f of x times f of one, which is two, plus f of one, which is again two, is equal to f of x plus one, but we can bring this one out, plus f of x, and this is now equal to two times f of x plus one. So we indeed have an equation to calculate f of two times x in terms of f of x. Now remember that we figured out that f of f of x is equal to f of x plus one. And as I said, if we can prove that f is injective, then we would have f of x equals x plus one. I personally tried to prove injectivity for a long time, but I was not able to do this. And instead, I tried to prove an easier version, namely that if we can find a real number b such that f of b is equal to f of zero, then we know that b is equal to zero. To do this, let's assume that we can find some real number b such that b is not equal to zero, but f of b is equal to f of zero, which is equal to one. From this equation here, we directly get that f of two times b is equal to two times f of b minus one, but two times f of b minus one is just equal to one. So we also have that f of two b is equal to one. And now we can go on to conclude that also f of four b is equal to one and so on. Now you can try to just plug in b in several equations we already figured out, but in the end, it won't be enough to come up with a contradiction to this assumption here. Moreover, as I said, I was not able to prove injectivity in general. Therefore, we have to use the specific assumption that B is not equal to zero. To do this, we want to plug in the value one divided by B into our equation. And for this, we consider P of one divided by B comma B. We get that f of one divided by b times 
f of b plus f of b is equal to f of 1 divided by b plus b plus f of b times 1 divided by b. We know that f of b is equal to 1. So on the left hand side, we have f of 1 divided by b plus 1. And on the right hand side, we have f of 1 divided by b plus b plus f of 1, which is equal to 2. If we subtract 1 and bring 1 into the argument here, then we see that the argument on the right hand side increases by b plus 1. This seems unreasonable because a function with period b plus 1 would have this behavior. But on the other hand, from f of b is equal to f of 0, we would guess that our function behaves like a function with period b. So at this point, we are close to a contradiction. And we indeed are able to come to this contradiction by using this equation here and the fact that also f of 2b, f of 4b, and so on are equal to f of 0. At first, I want to change b to 4b. So let's do this. We see that the left hand side stays the same because f of 4b is also equal to 1. But on the right hand side, we get that this is equal to f of 1 divided by b plus 4b and now plus f of 4, which is equal to 5. Before using our equation for 2 times x, we want to evaluate the value of p of 1 divided by 2b and 2b. We get that f of 1 divided by 2b times f of 2b, which is equal to 1, plus 1 is equal to f of 1 divided by 2b plus 2b, all plus f of 1, which is nothing but 2. We want to use this equation here now to calculate these two values. And to do this, I want to rearrange this equation here to get that f of x is equal to 1 half times f of 2x plus 1. The left hand side here becomes 1 half times f of 1 divided by b plus 1 plus 1. And on the right hand side, we get 1 half times f of 1 divided by b plus 4b plus 1 plus Plugging in the value of the right hand side here for f of 1 divided by b plus 1, we get that this is equal to 1 half times f of 1 divided by b plus 4b plus 5 plus 1. This is clearly a contradiction and therefore we conclude that our assumption was wrong and thus we have that from f of b equal f of 0, we can conclude that b is equal to 0. Now we want to use the combination of these two equations here again to finish our proof. For doing this, let's write f of 0 equals f of f of x minus 2 minus f of x minus 2. Using the second equation here, we get that this is equal to f of x minus 2 plus f of minus f of x minus 2. Before we can use this equation here, we have to find an expression for f of minus something. To do this, let's consider p of x minus 1. For the left hand side, we get f of x times f of minus 1, but f of minus 1 is equal to 0. So f of 0 plus 0 equals f of x minus 1 plus f of minus x. Bringing f of x minus 1 to the left hand side, we get that f of minus x is equal to minus f of x minus 1 plus 1. And now we can bring the 1 into the argument to get that this is equal to minus f of x minus 2. Using this equation for our blue term here, we get that this is equal to f of x minus 2 plus f of f of minus x. Now this equation here tells us that this is equal to f of x minus 2 plus f of minus x plus 1, which is now equal to f of x minus 1 plus f of minus x. This implies that f of minus x plus x minus 1 must be equal to 0. And thus, we finally obtain that f of x is equal to x plus 1. If we plug in f of x equals x plus 1 into our original equation, we see 
that this is indeed a solution. So f of x equals x plus 1 for all real numbers x is also a solution, and we are done.